so I kind of want to get into the differences between, you know, gaining muscle mass and gaining muscle strength and why, you know, it's, why is it so difficult for older people to gain muscle mass, whereas they can really gain more strength from resistance training? So for example, like they resistance train, right? They can get big increases in muscle strength, but not as big yep. in mass. What, why is that? Yeah, I actually, to be honest, you don't really know the answer to that question. Um, I think my guess would be that older people typically don't engage in exercise, that uh, resistance exercise that often. So when they initially begin with training, they do see those initial quite quick gains in strength. Um, and But what we do know is that older folks tend to be not just resistant to the anabolic influence of protein or amino acid ingestion or essential amino acid ingestion, they, they seem to be anabolically resistant to um, resistance exercise or an acute bout of resistance exercise across a, a, like a, a wide range of loading spectrums. So there is one paper out there that has looked at the protein synthetic response across that and all the people and, and seen it somewhat diminished. But um, you can, you know, people up, up to the age of 90 can certainly gain strength um, when engaging with resistance exercise. And I think, you know, as you get to that age, you probably care more about your strength and your functional abilities than, you know, having a lot of muscle, so to speak. So um, I think why that happens, I think it's maybe just because that they don't engage in exercise as much resistance exercise. So it's detectable earlier. Um, and when you combine that with the fact that there's anabolic resistance, uh, potential anabolic resistance to training in and of itself, that may explain why you, you can detect these bigger effects of strength or gains in strength compared to mass in, in those populations. But again, it's, it's really not my, I would say, uh, I'm not an expert in that area, but it would just be a, it's more of an educated guess. Is there any role for nutrition in gains in strength, like amino acids? Uh, that, that's a, an interesting question, yeah. So I think from amino acid perspective, the I'd say the, the gains in strength that would be uh, afforded through amino acid ingestion may well be just fed through increases in muscle mass or the small increases in muscle mass that occur. And, you know, I know that there's like a little bit of a disconnect between, you know, changes in mass and strength per se, but the gains in strength in that capacity, in that role may be because of um, the, uh, the change in mass. But I think if you think about um, omega-3s, there's been a couple of papers out there where a uh, Stuart Gray's paper that comes to mind um, from, from Glasgow, where they fed omega-3s to all the people uh, during resistance training and found only in women that it enhanced the the, the strength response um, uh, to, to a period of resistance training in women, and that was omega-3s. Uh, there's been other papers as well, one from a group in Brazil, again, looking at the effect of omega-3s with the resistance training in older women, showing that it, potentially, it potentiated the, the, the strength gains. Exactly how that works or how that happens, we're not too sure. I think it may be related to incorporation of DHA into the myelin sheath or into the neural networks that can enhance that strength adaptation. But I think that's one of the exciting things about omega-3s is that we see this phenotype change, but when you look under the hood, we don't really know what's going on. So I think from, um, from an omega-3 perspective, that is something that I think is, uh, is a very interesting. Were these studies mostly in older, older women? Yep. Okay. Older men and women from, um, uh, yeah. So both, both win older people. And, and there wasn't, the strength wasn't, uh, you didn't see the strength increases in men, older men. Uh, not in the, not, well, once there was a study in Brazil that was believed by Redaki and colleagues, and that was in AJCN, and the, that was a female-only cohort, um, so there's no real sex differences there. But the study by, I think it was Du Bois, and uh, Stuart Gray was the senior author, and Stuart's done some excellent work in this area. He's in Glasgow. Um, they found that the effect was more pronounced in women compared to men. But, you know, after talking to Stuart, it's a case of, you know, is it, you know, is it, is it a, a real effect? You know, is it because the women may not have been um, they may have been less trained than the male cohort so that when they engaged, there was a, a bigger response. If that was the case, then you'd expect it in both the control and the omega-3, so you wouldn't see an effect of omega-3. So it would suggest that the omega-3s are having an effect there. Um, and I know Stuart has followed a little bit of that work up with um, krill oil. So it's not just like, you know, omega-3s per se, uh, or fish oils. Stuart's done some work, Stuart Gray, with krill oil that has replicated some findings from Bettina Mittendorfer's group with increases in strength with omega-3 supplementation or size, sorry. So I think um, there's some exciting work there and it does seem to be that at least the omega-3s themselves may be affording or conferring some strength benefits, whether it's alone in the absence of resistance training or with resistance training, particularly in women. Are there, so the sex differences with respect to 
gaining muscle mass and gaining muscle strength, just generally speaking, are like what what are the sex differences? Uh, what in general or with in, the in general? And then the qu- next question is about omega three and and like. I mean, omega, I know there is a sex difference with respect to converting the plant omega-3, the, you know, plant, uh, what you get from plants, uh, ALA yep. into EPA and DHA. So estrogen really uh, plays a big role in increasing the conversion of ALA into EPA and DHA. But I don't know if there's, I don't, I'm not aware of literature showing specifically if you start with a marine source, if, you know, converting, for example, EPA into DHA, like if there's a role for estrogen in that but yeah off, off the top of my head I, I really don't know i do know that um there's p- p- snps on particular genes in, in women that may actually enhance the, the conversion of epa to dha uh, there's a group in toronto that have done some excellent work there um but i'm not off the top of my head uh too familiar i know that you know women or females can convert them more efficiently than than men but how that would feed into you know an improvement in, in muscle mass or muscle function I, I, i'm not too sure um, and in terms of the general training adaptations between all uh, younger, there's no difference really from my knowledge in terms of younger men and younger women with the gains, uh, despite some dogma out there is that the gains are pretty much quite similar. Uh, when it comes to older folks, I think that to me, it doesn't seem like there is either in that particular, and again, I'm not a particular expert in that. I, I don't believe there's too much of a difference between women and men. I think a lot of it may well be driven by, you know, who typically trains or who typically is engaging in those types of exercises versus who is not so if you get somebody who's never really you know engaged in resistance exercise and then starts in that regimen they may gain a little bit more than people who don't and i think that may explain some of the sex differences if they do exist in older folks but i, I think the differences are very minimal generally 